Hey guys, welcome to Master Riff 130. I'm sure you guys, uh, like myself, are still pretty much in shock um, at the passing of uh, Eddie Van Halen on Tuesday. Literally the guitar god of the guitar gods. It's it's amazing to see um, basically the, the social media feeds. If you're you know a guitar player, you'll see everyone basically outpouring of uh, sympathy and, and admiration and basically tribute to arguably um, one of the greatest of all time, without a doubt. He will definitely be looked on as we look back now, your Mozarts and your Bachs of the past. He's definitely up there with your you know, Hendrix and all that. Um, as an innovator and a man who literally defined, I, I would say, kind of modern rock guitar. It's things that we do now that pretty much Eddie Van Halen brought to the fore. It would be tone or articulations or whatever. So I thought it'd be fitting um, just to do a tribute um, and look at how to play one of my all-time favourite uh, Van Halen kind of intros and riffs and that's hot uh, for teacher. I um, mean there's loads we could have chosen from but um, this is one of my favourites. I think just because of the sheer energy involved in it and the flashiness of the intro and everything I just think it's an awesome kind of tune. So um, like a lot of Van Halen tunes, the actual recording is slightly flat of standard tuning, but 50 cents. But I'm standard tuning for this, so I've pitch shifted it so uh, we can play along, so we don't have to faff a bit with the Floyd. Uh, and it starts off with uh, this iconic bit of tapping. Now, this uh, tune, really, really fast uh, kind of swung feel to it. It's about 250 odd BPM tempo wise, so it's really fast. So. The timing of uh, this intro can be really, really tricky. Uh, if you listen to the recording, obviously you've got uh, Alex Van Halen playing all the kind of Tom intro, this long kind of drum intro. When he starts uh, bringing in the snare and the crash, that's where you want to listen for timing. So you've got that kind of uh, uh, crash and snare hit, and then you can count one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And what we're doing is we're basically coming in with pick scrapes on beat four of one of those bars. So you kind of do one, two, three, four, and you're coming in with the, the pick scrape down. So it lasts for kind of that beat four and then beat one of the next bar. So you're going to do one, two, three, four, one, like that. On beat two of that next bar, you're going to slide down um, with the left hand. It's roughly kind of tenth fret area. So it kind of goes one, two, three, four, one, two. Like that, okay? Uh, and then we would start getting into the tapping. So, if I let, I'll play a little bit of the audio and I'll slow it down and, and then I'll put the beats underneath and you can see what I mean with the timing. Okay, so once we've done that, we get straight into the tapping. So the way that we lead into this is we, we're gonna tap at the 12th fret. Um, then pull off to the open A and then hammer 3, 7 like that. Now, that is more of a lead into the actual kind of tapping like So that, what you're doing is you're playing that to land in this 12th fret again, which is on the beat. Now, timing wise for the tapping, what you're going to be doing once you've done that is I'm going to play these triplets. Okay, now that's it really, really slow, but that's your kind of six note phrase. So I'm tapping at the 12th fret, pull off to the 7th fret, take the 7th fret, pull off to 3, open A string, hammer back to 3 and 7. Now because of the timing of this, you might find it easier to count in a kind of half time. So instead of counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, you're going to be tapping up here on beats one and three. So it's like, so it's like one, three, one, three, like that. So it's one, two, three, one, two, yeah? And that will keep you kind of uh, sorted with the timing because it's really hard um, just getting this synchronized up. So basically we do a, a bar of that. So we've got like 12 notes. Let me do it again. Oops, and then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shift it up. So now instead of doing 0, 3, 7, in the next bar I'm going to do 0, 5, 9. So I'm changing kind of like uh, kind of like a D tonality here a little bit. Yeah. So slowly that bar kind of goes. 
and then I'm tapping again at the 12th fret. And now what we do is we play that pattern on this. I'm doing 12, go off to 9, to 5, to an A, back to 5, to 9, and do that again. Let me do it. So I end it off. Kind of just tapping 12 to 9. Now the way to think about this transition is you're going to move up to the D string now. So you're basically taking what you started with, moving it up a string. But the transition is the same as we did with the intro. This uh, is basically leading in to hit 12th fret in the beat there. So as you do this transition, yeah, you have to tap. 12, 0, 3, 7 on that D string to land a 12th fret on the beat. And then what we do is we basically take that same pattern that we did in the A string, move it up on the D string, so you've got your 12, 7, 3, 0, 3, 7. Then you transition up to you're doing your 5, 9, 12. This time when we get to the end of the phrase, I do 12, 9. And just sit on that ninth fret and add a little bit of vibrato with the fourth finger. So that kind of slowly goes. Okay. You might hear a little slide off there. Then I'm going to move to the next bar. As usual, I lead in with the. So I'm doing 12, 0, 3, 7 in the G string. To land that on the beat. Okay, so that kind of goes. Now what we do here is we switch though. So I'm moving now between the 037 and 059 on the, the G string. So. Yeah. And when we get to the end of that, I do my 12, uh, pull off to the 9th fret of the G string there with vibrato. Okay. So the pattern isn't too complex, you know, you're doing 3, 7, 12 with the open A string, 5, 7, 5, 9, 12, same thing in the D string. It's just these little podsies. So let me try, uh, I'll play through it slowly, it sounds like this. Okay, then we're into classic bit of uh, Eddie Van Halen kind of descending lick here. And this is based around, you can think of it more kind of an A pentatonic minor with some added notes. With a tap at the 12th fret, tap, pull off to 5, and a hammer 8 on that high E string. Okay, when I get to the 8, then I'm going to do 12 in the E string again, pull off to 8, 7, 5, and then I'm going to hammer on from nowhere. 8 in the B string, okay, so that kind of goes, okay, so this is one of these licks that has this Eddie Van Halen, uh, as he talked about, that like kind of falling down the stairs sensation to it, the rhythm, is, you know, there's a combination of rhythms here, the way to think about this is I think of um, playing that kind of phrase there, then when I do the same, like a pattern in the B and the G strings, I just slow it down a little bit, make it more even. So when I've done that, hammer on from nowhere, 8th fret, then I'm going to do 12 in the B string, 8, 7, 5, and then 8 on that uh, G string there. Same thing again, 12 in the G string, 8, 7, 5 on the, the G string, hammer on to 8 on the, the D string there, yeah. And then this bit here is a little bit quicker because at this point what you're thinking about is ending on this chord that we're going to get to. So I do 12, 8, 7, 5, and then 12, hammering 8 on the A string there. And then 12, 8, 7, 6, uh, 5, and then the A string. Okay, so slowly the whole thing. Okay, so you're, it's kind of one of these phrases where you start off quick, even, and then you kind of rush towards the end, that's the kind of flow of it, okay? Now, as we do that, the last little uh, chord I'm going to play here 
leads into the next section. I want playing in an F sharp kind of minor seven chord. So I go down here, thumbs the second fret of the E string. My first finger is barring the second fret of the D and G string. So that whole phrase kind of goes. Okay. So now we get into a new riff, basically section B. So I've ended on this F sharp minor seven chord. Let that ring for a bar. So at that tempo, you know, it's like one, two, three, four. Once you've done that, I'm then going to play. Keep that thumb in the bass note, a second for that E string. Pam mute it, and I'm going to play that. Can I play that one and two and three and now, this is one of the the critical things about this whole tune because it's got the swung eighth feel at 250 bpm what you're aiming for here is that swing feel at that tempo now that's really quite tricky it's one of the things that eddie van halen you know is amazing at just the sheer rhythm playing so that what you're aiming for slowly would sound like one and two and three and so you need to get that and speed up so you can think of the downstroke as being a little bit heavier, lasting a little bit longer, and then the upstroke being quicker. Okay, so you basically do one and two and three and, three and then you go four up to the fifth fret here. So I'm playing basically my first finger barring the fifth fret, the D and G strings. So one and two. Yeah, got a little break there, then I play fourth fret with the first finger barring the D and G strings. Yeah, so slow that goes. Yeah. Then I go down, play palm mute again with the thumb in the second fret. Then I'm gonna do first fret of the D and G strings with the first finger barred. And then I move up to the second fret. So it's kinda like you're you're kinda doing like a little chromatic movement back to your first chord. But you have that palm mute on the, the second fret uh, E string before it. Then I slide the same, and then I do a quick slide. So together with the first bit slow, it sounds like this. Yeah. And once you sustain in that chord, you then go back to your palm mute on the, the E string, and you're kind of doing three and four and one and two and three and so it's like three and four and one and two and three and. Then I'm going to go and slide up. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that chord shape pretty much at the second fret and moving up to the tenth fret. I use my thumb for all of that. Once I get to the tenth fret, I'm gonna hit palm mute on that, and I'm barring uh, the tenth fret, the D and G strings there. So it's kind of like a little F chord. And then what I'm gonna do is move down in minor thirds. So play the tenth fret, same shape at the seventh fret. Same shape at the fourth fret, yeah. and then basically uh, I go back to yeah. So and then do my palm mute, second fret E string, go to the first fret bar, and then back to the. So slow that section goes. Three and four and one. Yeah. At this point, I've got my palm muted. Uh, Second fret E string again, so I'm leading into basically our five four. Yeah, so that's all the same as before. Yeah. Make sure you get a palm mute in that second fret E string before you do one two. Then we go to an E sus four chord. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to bar the second fret of the A, D, G strings, and rhythmically I'm kind of hitting that like that. So I'm hitting, um, letting that sustain for kind of beat and a half. Hit it again, and there's a little kind of rest there, but you can hear the E string droning out. So what you might be doing is basically. Is releasing the pressure with the first finger. Yeah. And then I end it off basically getting ready for the next section. So when you're doing when you're sustaining that E sus4 chord, go back the volume to that. 
And then what I'm going to do is pluck basically like an A power chord, some batting at the second fret, and D and G strings with the first finger, but then we open A, and I just pluck it with the pick doing the A string, middle finger plucking the D string, and my ring finger plucking the G string to give that little kind of staccato feel. Okay, so that's sectioned slowly uh, from this sharp minor seven, since like this. So next part of the riff, the volume's rolled back here, so I'm not rolling it totally off, but enough that the, the distorted tone that I had is slightly cleaner, okay? And this whole section's played uh, kind of with uh, hybrid picking over the fingers. So as I said, I've just ended in that A power chord, and I've just hit that. Then what I'm going to do is continue to bar the D and G strings at the second fret. I'm going to tip my pinky and move it to fifth fret, the uh, G string there. Okay, I'm going to pluck that with the middle and ring finger. Staccato, so it kind of cuts really short. So I pluck it, then I pluck it and pull off the, the pinky to the first finger. Then I play that uh, A chord, banning the, the first fret there with the fingers. Okay, so so it goes. Then you do it again. Then you do it with the pull off. Okay, then you have this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hammer. I use the pick for this, so play the open A string. And then I'm going to hammer up 5th fret with the first finger, then to 6th and 7. Then I'm going to bar the D and the G strings at the 5th fret with the first finger. Then I use my 4th finger for this, you might want to use your 3rd finger. But I play 8th fret of the D and G strings, and slide back a fret. The seventh fret there. So slowly that section sounds like this. Okay, when you speed it up. Okay, so we play that another two times. Fourth time. Uh, through this kind of riff, we go back to doing this bit, but we end it off with this. So what I'm doing is I'm playing the, the little 2 and the D string 5 and the G string once, do it with the pull off, then I'm going to play the open D and G strings with the middle and ring finger of course as usual, and I give that a little staccato feel as well. Because that leads us into the next bit. So what we're going to do for the kind of final part of the riff, Back up with the volume, so we've got our full gain again. I'm going to play an A power chord, so I'm banding at the second fret the D and G strings, open A string. Yeah, the whole band's in now, so it's got that kind of oomph to it. And what I'm going to do is kind of play the same sort of feel of the riff, but now the little pull off that I'm doing is going to be third fret the A string. So I play third fret the A string, and staccato, then I do a pull off, and then play the A power chord again. So it kind of sounds like this. And then here we have our little, a little uh, kind of fill that we did in the previous riff. The only difference, I guess, is we do our hammer on, is when you do the eight to seven, you can do the slide or you can hit uh, both kind of fret positions. Just to add a little bite to it, because slow it goes like this. Okay, so that's it. So it's kind of the four sections. You've got your tapping intro. Um, you've got your basically setting up the groove. Yeah, there's a cool bit. Then you've got your quiet bit, you know, just to kind of bring the energy level down a little bit. And you've got this cool little ZZ top like kind of riff. And then basically you've got your which is probably the favourite part of the tune for me. Just when everything comes back again with that riff, it just sounds awesome to me. So have fun with that, guys. Um, as uh, I said, I think most of the guitar world is still pretty much in shock um, at Eddie Van Halen's passing. Uh, but hopefully this little video 
was just a little kind of tribute and um, honour to the the great man whose legacy legacy is basically you know it's undeniable. Um, we will be talking about the great man, you know, decades, centuries from now. So uh, have fun with it, guys, and uh, rest in peace, Mr. Van Halen.